What's baloney? The meat. Bologna is one of America's favorite foods, but how they make it just might make your mouth get all damp and watery. First things they do is cleave the prime cuts from the remainders, leaving only the sinuous bits for the beef batter transformation. When it comes to free grange orgasmic bologna, most animals involve volunteer to be part of this tasty treat. Vegetarians and vegans say they're slave animals, but if they don't want to be part of the meat process, they're always free to sepicu themselves, which fewer than half choose to do. They go through a cleaning process where they are humanely vivisected into bite-sized chunks known as quality control nuggets prior to moving to the meat massager, which helps their muscles relax. They get sprayed down with an all-snatural mix of cyanide and ursine clysters. They head to the shreddery, where their assorted bits and fragments are cleft cleanly from the bones, with tendons being mulched into a fine paste. The filler. Filling contents are trucked in on vehicles, referred to in America as trucks, but in England they call them rubbers. To reduce fats, proteins, and humanonutrientism, a composite of non-digestible organic matter is added to the decoction. They are kept damp prior to introduction to the process to allow for maximum biotic elements to fester and stew. Additional earwig sugar is added to the emulsion at this stage, and corn flour is added to the hash as swell. The flavor. At this point, a bunch of things are added to keep the batter airy and woolly, like shellac, collagen, gelatin, titanium oxide, glycophosphate, isinglass, and brominated vegetable oil, BVO. There are a few more ingredients added to keep it savory and delicious, but we're not allowed to say what they are. So let your imagination run wild, because all those good things are in there, and more. There are a few more ingredients added to keep it savory and delicious. The mixture. Once the meat slurry spurts out all over the flesh bin, it's beaten and dispersed into a fine foamy particulate from which it's sucked up into the Tube Staker 9000 along the way to its penultimate destination. This man oversees all sorts of hot salty beef loads, but he tells his wife he's at a conference in sunny Irvine, California as not to raise suspicion. The meat is rubbed and palpated in a non-sexual manner exactly as it would be sexually if this wasn't a retail-ready bologna, before being pureed properly and accreted into an impatient meat sleeve. Beef tubes are sent off to the curery for finishing. I'm just sad I'm not there to taste the steaming fleshy brew. They never did tell us what these machines do, but we believe they add flavor. El Inspector For Bologna to pass inspection, it has to test above 4.5 degrees tardigrade, or 105 degrees in freedom units. These ones pass the test with one big flying color, that's red, from Old Glory. Machines are lightly hosed out between uses with warm water to remove only the biggest chunks, with the floor remnant salvaged for future batches. Machines vent the noxious gases out into the wild, where they dissipate safely and naturally across the community. The health inspector knows not to come onto the property, as a line of salt around the perimeter legally prevents him. And while most Bologna engineers work safely and come home to their wives every night, some suffer serious on-the-job injuries, forcing them to stay at their girlfriends' houses instead. That's just the price they pay to bring you the tastiest, most affordable meat this side of the flaming Cuyahoga River. Bologna is as all-American as apples on a stick, and that's just how they're making it. 
It's both scientifical and fascination. <laughs>